Any other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so you're assuming that people will you buy your coin because it's stable and tied to gold and will kind of uh, be pan-African. And, and that's kind of where you're headed here. Um, now you started off by saying you okay. also it just not that you're, that, that's, services. That was, that's a subset of what we do. Yeah, so. you also said you do sort of fee-for-services for, um, for giving people a, you know, a yeah, a, a, or you allow other people to do coins based on other, on other uh, I, I'm just wondering, you seem to be doing a lot of things. Okay, so let me clarify. Are you an investment bank or are you a, let me how do you define yourself? We are, peer-to-peer -peer capital market software event. That's what we do. So we create software that allow you to do business directly with him without that Goldman Sachs banker, okay? She could do business directly with her without XYZ third party, an authoritative third party. That looks an awful lot like Goldman Sachs in the blockchain. The big difference is we don't have the conflict of interest. Goldman Sachs has extreme conflict often, okay? and. On top of that conflict, we have a very different structure. Um, Goldman Sachs, not, let's not pick on Goldman, the investment banking industry in the States and many places in Europe has a structural deficiency in their business models. Up to 60% of gross revenues goes to what? Salaries. Compensation. Salaries, bonuses, etc. 60%. The investment banking industry is the only industry where the employees make more than the owners of the company. If you look at net the common after taxes and compare it to gross compensation, there was a significant imbalance. So what we've done was we have created smart contracts, right, that run in the blockchain that can escrow capital and, and imitate and replicate most of the functions of investment banks, of mini exchanges, etc., without that 60% gross deficiency. Okay. okay. Terrific. Well, yeah. There okay. are a lot of people that are trying to do various banking things on the blockchain, so you got a lot of competition. But um, well, actually, interesting, actually, the African there's only, slams. There's only one company in the industry to date that has a regulatory license to provide blockchain-type issuance of security tokens out of 4,100 broker-dealers in the United States. And the way that they got granted this authority is they only have they only have the capability to utilize the blockchain in a very limited way. I mean, I can get into it, but it's it's very specific, um, and it might not be a good use of time. So there's only one company. Only and one company. You guys? No, no, we're not this company. Well, we're we're trying to build a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Right. This company that has this capability is called Tempo, and they still act as an intermediary where they issue common stock in um, in mirror with tokens, and then they put the common stock in a trust, and then they the token represents only allowable for private placement of the present transactions securities. We are in the process, and there are many people who are in the process that you hear of pursuing this, but it is an extremely complicated discussion. There aren't even attorneys in the industry. We, we know <laughs> we've talked to many, 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 many people. And that's a fact who can't even wrap their mind around the entire set of regulation. Because for instance, you have to look at it from this perspective. There's the, there's the Securities Act of 33, there's the Securities Exchange Act of 34, there's the Investment Companies Act of 1940, there's the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, there's the Uniform Securities Act of State Regulations of 1956. There's not a single attorney out there that knows all these regulations and then all the specific nuances about them which you would have to have the expertise of in order to go to the regulator and say this whole entire regulation that for which there's maybe four or five counterparties of bodies that have to be in partnership with to comply with, I'm gonna use these blockchain solutions and explain to you how this blockchain can solve all those problems. There's not a single firm in the industry that's even close to that discussion and that inflection point with the SEC in general. Let, let me expound on that. That's just for the U.S., okay? The U.S. is only about 25% of financial economic activity in the world. That's not Europe, that's not Asia, that's not Africa. In addition, 
He just went through the legal requirements. Understanding the actual economic potential of smart contracts, public versus private blockchains, etc., is an additional requirement. We are teaching much more than we're retaining. Okay? We're at the forefront, I'm positive. In many of the jurisdictions, we're the num we're application or applicant number one going in. And these jurisdictions actually have legislation written already. So, and that's where we're going where the legislation is written. We have no action letters um, in the other countries where they say you can do what you want, um, assuming you don't do X, Y, Z. But we're also going for fully, uh, a full set of legislation for protection. Also, these firms that the firm is discussing does not have diversity. Like I said, we have four full-time analysts. We have full-time AMRKYC. We have um, a lot of expertise in traditional Wall Street banking. We have um, individuals such as myself who's created basically the peer to peer capital market regime. Diversity is key, and most of the competition from the industry are mostly computer programmers, software engineers, okay, or the traditional legacy system who still may understand the mechanics of swaps, equities, etc., but they don't understand the full potential from a macro and financial perspective. For instance, we are also looking to do underwriting and create financing, um, infrastructure financing in Africa, um, private equity. And we were, asked, we were asked the other day, so should I do uh, equity or debt? And that's not the way to go about it. We take a problem, right, and we solve it. We don't have a bunch of widgets sitting on the shelf. What we have Sir, is... We have to catch a plane, but okay, thank you fair enough. Easy. Okay. Well, I'd like to finish that train of thought. I won't finish. Okay. So, when you do an offering, if someone asks you to go do equity or debt, okay, you don't choose equity or debt. You go through the characteristics of what the offeror wants. I want to maintain control of my company, no matter what, which is number one on many uh, entrepreneurs' lists. But I don't mind giving up earnings or cash flows. So instead of doing a common stock offering or a preferred equity offering or a convertible note, we scratch all that out. We create the attributes that both the buyer and the seller want, and then we create a custom token. That custom token is usually a security, but it cannot sit squarely in common stock, preferred stock, debenture, bond, etc. That's an example of what we do. So I gave a very extended answer, and thank you, Andrew, for the help. Any other questions? Reggie, uh, before you go to your next set of questions, we're having a special private uh, dessert tonight, dessert party at 8 to 10 p.m., in Suite 18 249, you're welcome to come and um, talk more in depth. And we'll actually be de demonstrating the uh, technology so you can see how it works. Okay. We've got to do a panel. Okay. Thank you, Thank you everybody for your time. Thank you.